all this stuff I produce, or people like me produce the raw material for them. Except the people who put up this statue and all the others, they're not interested in history. They're interested in stories, in myth, in fairy tales, in mutually incompatible fairy tales. They change, they swap around. So stories, myths, and fairy tales. The past can be used to make patriotic stories, nationalist statues, as we saw in that film extract, and even bomb-making factories. The past is routinely used and abused. Now, history is the most powerful weapon we have in the battle against this abuse of the past. And as Hobsbawm suggests, historians have a duty to identify and act to counter the abuse of the past. The goal of the good historian is to find out and explain what really happened in the past. But not everybody who uses the past uses it with such a noble ambition. What makes historians special, and special users of the past, is that they are alone concerned with making sense of the past simply for making sense of the past. History is the study of the past for itself. David Lowenthal makes a really useful distinction in this respect, in that if the user of the past is using the past for present day purposes, whatever those present day purposes might be, whether positive, uh, benign, or indeed harmful, then what they're doing is not history, but rather what he calls heritage. Heritage is not history at all. While it borrows from and enlivens historical study, heritage is not an inquiry into the past, but a celebration of it. Not an effort to know what actually happened, but a profession of faith in a past tailored to present day purposes. The past is always knocking. Never has the past been so present in our lives than it is today. Through heritage, the past is absolutely everywhere, on dedicated television channels and a thousand Hollywood movies and Netflix series, in folkloric celebrations and, and glossy magazines, best-selling novels and nostalgic commercial adverts. You can't drive down a European motorway without a brown sign crying out to you, come and get your heritage fix here. Well, if you want to get some of his Heritage is everywhere. The question is why? I think it's because we live in a time of unprecedented change and resulting uncertainty. Traditional identities of, uh, of gender, of family, of, of nationhood have shifted and are continuing to shift. And political instability, the threat of ecological catastrophe provide an existential crisis in which the past, through heritage, provides a sort of soothing balm. In the words of the poet, nostalgia is the opium of the age. Heritage's nostalgia provides stability and coherence, a certain, a certain certainty of the good old days. In a time of unprecedented social, economic and cultural change, this is important. The reassuring thing about the past is that we know what happens next. It makes sense in a way that the present never can. And history is different to heritage. Good history is essential if we are to continue to know the difference between them, because heritage may borrow from history. It even looks like history sometimes. It can be produced by historians. But heritage has a common, non-historical, present-orientated purpose. Heritage uses the past to entertain, to inspire, to engage, to provide identity, to sell us Levi 501s, in the here and now, that's what makes heritage importantly different. 